All right, well, those of you that watch my channel may be wondering why I'm uh, using a different kind of mic control or why I'm doing oxalic acid through a vaporizer like this. The reason is I've got a video out there for making um, an oxalic acid uh, vaporizer. Um, and this, it, it, it took too long. That's just the bottom line. It takes too long to load the thing and you got to cool it off in between and then put it in the hive and block it up and all that. This is a lot faster. And uh, those of you that watch my channel also know that uh, I'm kind of into things being quick. So, uh, I just wanted to do this video to show what you need to get started and how you do this. Insect fogger. You need some uh, 190 proof alcohol, uh, which I got at the liquor store. Uh, this came from Walmart. Uh, it's called a Burgess. Uh, they also sell these at uh, um, Home Depot. I think it's the exact same fogger, but it's branded as a like uh, cutter or black flag or something like that. But it's the exact same fogger, so you can get it either place. Uh, Walmart was the cheapest place I found it. This is 190 proof grain alcohol. Got this at the liquor store. It was $16.19 for 750 mils, I think is what's in there. Huh. You know, I don't think it says on there anyway. Anyway, for that amount. You need uh, propane to run this, and you need some oxalic acid. I got this off of, uh, off of uh, online off of eBay and I'll try to put links uh, to this stuff down below where you can find this stuff on uh, oh, actually I think I got this on Amazon um, I'll put links where you can find this stuff because uh, it's always frustrating when you can't find what people are talking about okay so let me open this up and show you this is the fogger that you want they sell a lot of different ones but this one has a little bit of a benefit to it some of them have like a little port on the side where you pour the fluid in and that kind of stuff but then it's hard to get it back out you know i have uh four hives right now and i probably will never have more than well, 10 i probably won't even have that many so i'm always going to be small scale so i want to be able to make this stuff up in small batches so i could you can put it in a little uh this is a half pint jar and that fits right on there and replaces this so I can mix it up in here I can have just a little bit I can use it I can take this off seal it up and leave it until the next time that I need to treat so that's that's a big benefit right there all right so the first thing we've got to do to be able to use this is we have to mix up our uh, solution so the proportions are you're going to use 100 mils of uh, the grain alcohol and you're going to use 25 grams of the oxalic acid now you can find uh, I'll, I'll put some links to some scales but you can find uh, really cheap scales online now this is one I've had around uh, for years and I'm just gonna you want to put you a little piece of paper on there and then you've got to zero it out so, we got to see what our paper weighs. Now, if you have an electronic scale, you can just hit tear on there and it will zero out for you. So, that's going to weigh two and a half grams. I'm going to do 25 grams. So, that's going to be 20. And I'm going to move this to seven and a half. And if I, when I get that balanced again, that'll show, that'll be my 25 grams. Okay, so that's my 25 grams. I think I probably have a lifetime supply of oxalic acid. Okay, now this is a beaker, uh, but you can also just, uh, if you just measure this out, if you have, have like a one cup measuring cup that does milliliters, uh, you can just, so we're gonna measure out 100 mils. All right, now, um, to mix this, what you can do 
is put this in a little pot of water and you have to heat it in order to get this to go in. Um, it won't dissolve otherwise and uh, you don't want to put this just straight on the stove and start heating it really fast because this is uh, alcohol so uh, it could you know flame on you so if you're going to heat this on the stove put it in a little pot of water and heat it uh, slowly. If you got a gas stove, realize that if these fumes hit the gas, it's going to flame up on you. So what you might do <clears throat> is put it down in a pot that's deep enough that if it were to flame on you, you could put a pot, you could put the lid uh, on that pot and stop it. But just anyway, that's at your own risk. Be careful with that. I'm going to actually use, I've got this stir, this hot, hot plate that I've had for years, and that's a stir stick that you put in there and it'll actually stir it for me. Like that. Isn't that cool? Alright, then we're going to turn this on. And we're going to add this to it. Okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to let that sit here and stir until it gets clear. Okay, you can see we are almost completely clear now. There's one little piece that's still flying around in there, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that because I don't want this to boil. So I got a strainer here, just a little tea strainer. And I'm gonna make me some cheap filter paper here. Just gonna take a paper towel. Put it down there. And I'm just going to pour this straight through. And this is just to make sure that I don't clog up my fogger with any bits. Alright, so there is our solution. Alright, so I got a lid on here, so that's ready to transport. The next thing I'm going to do is go out in the uh, to the hives and actually treat them. A word of caution before we get started, you are using propane. This thing's going to get very hot. Don't burn yourself. The other thing is, is you're going to be vaporizing alcohol and blowing it into your hive. So there is a risk that um, you, know, you could cause a fire. Uh, saw some people online that said they tried to ignite this stuff and it wouldn't ignite. I don't really find that uh, to be reliable because uh, if you're going to vaporize alcohol, it's going to burn if you have an ignition source for it. So just realize that's a possibility. I don't, I, I couldn't find anybody that said it had happened to them, but just wanted to let you know. One other thing you are going to need before you do this is you're going to need some type of a respirator. Um, this, uh, you can't just wear a mask like a surgical mask or an N95 mask you would get at Home Depot. You've got to have something that's going to filter uh, organic and inorganic compounds. So be sure you pick up uh, the right mask. I'll try to uh, link one down on the bottom for you. These, fum these fumes are harmful to your lungs, so just be sure you don't breathe them in. Alright, so I'm going to light this fogger. And let it run for about two minutes. Alright, I'm going to change this out. I got my suit on because I'm not sure how they're going to react to this. I got my respirator on. There we go. Okay. There's starting. Okay, here we go. Alright guys.
All right, well, that's how you use a fogger. Now, I, did, I forgot to say in the beginning, this was not my idea. Um, I looked, found this stuff on a lot of different places on the internet, uh, but there's a guy out there uh, that does Barnyard Bees, is his channel, and uh, this is pretty much exactly what he did. So I don't want to be taking credit uh, for anybody else's work, but uh, kind of tried to congeal it together, and, and places I've looked, um, this is kind of, what I decided to do from looking at what other people had done so hopefully um, this will work it sure was quick and um, and a lot easier it seemed to stir them up but they weren't trying to uh, sting me so uh, it didn't really seem to put them in attack mode but uh, anyway hope this helps somebody thank you for watching